Okay, this will be the uh, walk around of the 80, 1983 Grady White Seafarer 226. I'm going to try to play with the brightness through this so it actually shows everything correctly. I would imagine it's 22 and a half feet. Um, I'd have to measure for an exact measurement. Um, quickly we'll go we'll walk down the side of the rub rail. I'm sure you'll hear through this video I'm not much I'm not a mechanic, I'm not in a boat that much, uh, especially fishing boats. Um, a relative of mine has recently passed away and his wife is left with trying to part with some of the estate, some things that she just doesn't have any use for. Um, it seems to be an excellent boat, but we are not in the market for a fishing boat. Um, it is registered till 2022, which in Michigan would have mean they re-registered it last year or renewed the registration. We uh, we have a pleasure boat that, again, I uh, don't know much about those either. Um, if anything has to be done, it's taken in. But uh, fishing is just not something I've ever gotten into on the bay, actually. Um, it looks to be in great shape, I mean, for the year, but I don't know, it's a fishing boat, so it could be something that is actually in excellent shape, or maybe you'll watch the video and think that there's a good amount of age showing on it. Um, I'll show you the haul real quick. I did notice a Nick. Um, I did ask his wife. She says that they have never ever had an issue with taking on any sort of significant or anything even uh, concerning any water flow that's about the size of a tip of your finger from here to here uh, it's not very deep um, you see there's a scratch that runs down so there are some scratches and nicks obviously the hall is not 100% mint, but it's obviously a boat from 1983 that's been used, so uh, I haven't noticed anything too out of whack um, <coughs> So yes, this is the outside here. I uh, will jump up in here in a second um, Everything that you see on the boat <coughs> Excuse me uh, does come with it. There's nothing being removed prior to the sale. Uh, she did state, I remember him saying even uh, back when, when they bought the boat, um, I, I originally, I think he paid about 5000 for it, but the uh, transom was cracking, uh, and our local marina here said that uh, it was a very dangerous thing to have going on, so he had the transom replaced, obviously professionally. He's a pretty anal guy as far as structural things go. I mean, there probably will be some little quirks with the boat, but uh, he obviously didn't want to sink or lose the outboard off it. But the repair is obviously excellent quality. Got a phone call coming in. Um, Vin is still in there, so I don't know where the repair would have started or stopped. Let's zoom out a little bit here. Brighten that back up. There. I mean, I don't know if it come all the way out to the edge, or if it was just this area, but. Um, I should be able to find the receipts for the transom replacement. It was done at our one of our local marinas, I believe, Ridey Marina. If you were to look that up, it's R Y D E Marina. Um, I'm in Petoskey, Michigan. I'm actually in Harbor Springs, Michigan, but it's uh, it should be listed about Petoskey, Michigan. So the outboard's got some dirtiness to it you know it's old 
235 horse. Um, the prop seems to be in great shape. Hopefully the brightness in the video will... Looks a little dark on my phone. But anyways, the prop's in great shape. The skag looks to be really good. Um, I know she did state there was a gasket replaced. All she could tell me was there was a gasket replaced in between here and here. So I imagine that lower unit gasket, I don't know. She said it was about the size of a stop sign is what she remembers. Uh, this is cracked. Um, still structurally, I mean, you can step on it, but we just try to step here uh, when we're entering the boat. Uh, so we'll get up in here. Um, there is a walkthrough area up into a little front seating area. It looks like it's missing a cushion. Um, again, everything in the video comes with the boat. Uh, not the battery charger. Um, when I first turned the key on, nothing happened. Um, come back here, located the battery and there was a on off switch. Um, I turned on and it still seemed, uh, it wouldn't roll the motor over, we'll put it that way. All these compartments are drainable, so I imagine all of them could be used as a bait tank or just general storage. I do not know what is factory or if anything's aftermarket as far as wiring goes. Um, try to fit this back in here, sorry, for the angle. Um, this here does work. So, anyways, the boat was on the water last year, but... <coughs> Uh, apparently there was some trouble with it idling. Um, we'll try to start it here in a minute. I do not have a water hookup. No idea what it will do. I, I've primed it. Uh, the, I did turn the key for a brief second. The motor will run over, so we'll see how long it takes to start up. Um, if it starts up. But it, apparently, it, like I said, it, it ran uh, but about towards the salmon season in the fall last year, she said he uh, was complaining about the fact it wouldn't troll anymore because it would not run at an idle speed. Um, so yeah, there's an issue with it idling wise. Uh, there may be an issue with it actually running wise, but not a mechanic. Um, this nice divider wall for if you're cruising on the lake, I imagine that uh, water doesn't overtake the transom area. Uh, there is the area here. I mean, it's in reasonably clean shape. There's some leaves in there and whatnot, but it's not, uh, you know, it's not embarrassing or anything. It's not, it's not so dirty that I wouldn't be down here. Obviously, I'd try to give it a good cleaning. Oh, uh, that looks like a seat or possibly two. Um, another little storage drain area uh, some rod holders down here both sides um, so <clears throat> as far as recent things last year apparently he had purchased this uh, the bimini top 
I believe that's how you say that. Um, that was about four hundred dollars, is from what I understand. I know this is going to be upside down, but it's a uh, Carver Polyguard. Um, sorry the, for being upside down, but. That apparently is about $400. Uh, this also he installed last year in the middle of the year, getting ready for the salmon season. Um, it is a, oh, maybe that's gotta be, maybe the key has to be on for that to work. Huh. Oh. I'll try to mess with that in a second, I guess. I'm not gonna take up too much time right now. Uh, when I first turned the key on and plugged everything in, it was lit up. It read uh, a water temperature, uh, and it looked like a mile per hour in a depth. Um, a friend of mine said those are pretty much useless unless you're big into fishing. All it does is tell you the temperature of a water at a certain depth, um, but that does come with it. That was approximately 800 last year. Uh, from what his wife remembers. A lot of the stuff I should be able to have receipts for. She's slowly tracking everything down. Um, now here, uh, I get, I'm not even gonna go back to this, but I'm sure that works. Like I said earlier, the display was on. Maybe I, oh, I probably bumped the wires here because I don't have them actually. There it goes. I don't have them actually clamped down onto the battery. Oh, shoot. One moment, please. Just trying to angle these back on here. There. Uh, so that all works. Anyways, sorry for wasting the time with that. Um, now let me start back with all these switches off. I was turning them on to see if one of them powered that up or not. Um, it looks like when you turn the key on, the fuel gauge does not move, so it is probably inoperable. The trim gauge does move, but it's obviously inaccurate because the motor is all the way down. It's reading up. No idea about the RPM gauge. Uh, real quick. I have no idea, obviously, if that works or how it works. Uh, there is two antennas here, one on the other side that's identical. Um, trim. It does go all the way up into a trailer position and it has a lock on the motor. That's how I transported it here. I don't want to go too low, the skag's real near the concrete right now. Um, these switches, wiper does work, but it has no blade on it. Um, when you turn this pump on, it sounds like it would fill up this tank here. It, I don't know, you can just hear a pump running. It sounds like it's maybe trying to pull water into this. Maybe not, I have no idea how that uh, all works. I would imagine that's the live well. That would imagine be the actual bait tank on the boat. Um, yeah, so that pump sounds like it would pump into the live well to fill. It does work, whatever it is. The navigation lights, I have no idea. The horn does not work. Um, I don't believe the fuel is really a necessary thing. I'm very uncertain about that. I can hear this pump run as well, I imagine, is the bilge. Well, it says aft I'm and forward, so I'm not, I don't know nautical terms. Uh, the accessory, I have no idea what that does. The interior lights, that one's self-explanatory 
that one doesn't light up. I imagine it's burnt out. That one does. Uh, so those, at least those wires are functional. Um, we will give it a shot here. If you're pushing on the key, I imagine that's electric choke. Uh, we used to have an old boat when I was younger that uh, I remember my dad telling me you have to push the key in for the choke. So uh, we'll give this a shot here. I don't really want to run it longer than that. Seems like it idles, but like I said, uh, she stated that he pulled, did not fish last year's end of the year season because he was having trouble with the boat idling. Um, I will start it and run it for another second. We'll try to put the foam back here. See if you can hear it. Um, yeah, so I'm not really, uh, I don't have the water clamps to try to let it idle any longer than that, but again, um, it seems to fire up and go, but she stated that he said uh, the reason why he didn't have it on the lake the end of last year was because there was an idling issue. It would not troll, it constantly stalled out, so I imagine it will need some engine work. I'm not sure if it's serious engine work or not. Um, the downriggers do come with it. There's the third one in the bow. The rod holders do come with it. Nothing's being removed from the boat. Um, I will show you real quick here. Try to hold the phone in my other hand. Um, motor. It's easy to steer. Full right, again, it's very easy to steer, full left, um, I will put the motor all the way up so you see that the uh, trim does go all the way up. Uh, like I said, I don't know anything about the boat really besides what I've stated here in the video. I'm just trying to help her work through this estate. Um, she, uh, uh, I asked her what they were doing about some of the things and some of them I, I feel like they'd be okay on eBay uh, as long as we remain as honest and open as we can about it. Um, so yes, I believe the boat will need some sort of mechanical work. Uh, I wouldn't imagine it's gonna be fresh gas and hit the lake. Um, I would expect more than that if, if I was a buyer. Uh, you know, it's an old boat. It does seem to be in in reasonably good shape. Um, and like I said last year, uh, he missed the tail end of the season. Um, apparently they were planning to repair it this spring. Uh, and there was Obviously, things that he was not uh, planning for, or at least that she wasn't planning for. Um, that's the boat, 1983 Seafarer. Um, any specific questions or any specific pictures that you would like, uh, feel free to message me. Um, I will try to leave my number in the eBay ad. I will accept a buy it now offer, um, but I'm just going to list it as an auction and see where it goes. Uh, you guys have a wonderful day. Thanks for taking the time.